The use of formal methods and standardisation of interfaces of signalling systems. In ULINX, the European infrastructure managers standardise the interfaces between signalling subsystems of different suppliers. The adoption of ULINX will reduce both lifecycle costs and the time to market, which were caused by repetitive developments. ULINX have developed a reference architecture to define which subsystem has which function and how those subsystems interact across the interfaces. At the core of this signalling system architecture is the interlocking. The interlocking has standardised interfaces to field elements such as points, signals and level crossings. The use of railway signalling systems and their technology continues to evolve. Current systems are a consequence of over a century's experience. These systems have shown to be functioning very reliably. Currently, the technology process is supported by documents, with mainly textual information, schemes and diagrams. These documents for development, design and maintenance are challenging to be understood together with today's digital technology. As technology evolves, there is an increasing number of systems and subsystems with unique interfaces. This leads to many possible variations and combinations. The signalling system becomes more complex because of the increasing amount of requirements concerning reliability, availability, maintenance and safety. Also, there are requirements based on laws and from other national and international rules to be taken into account. Interface standardisation, there is no need to harmonise the operational rules of the involved railways. In new links, the input of the requirements of each infrastructure manager is based on use cases. These use cases reflect the distribution of the functions over the various subsystems. And in this way, the use cases also reflect the interfaces. The life cycle model, sometimes called the V model, is used for the development of railway systems. It is a European standard that describes the system's engineering development process. Using the V model ensures that the resulting system fulfills all of the requirements in each of the life cycle phases. The V model is a simplified representation of the development of a system. The development phase leads to increasingly detailed specifications. The realization phase leads to an increasingly integrated system. This includes the route protection, the train protection, and the control technology. ULINX uses model based system engineering, MBSE. In this phase, modelling and system engineering expertise is combined with signalling expertise. In the first phase of the SysML modelling process, the infrastructure managers define the appropriate use case descriptions based on their knowledge of signalling principles, the requirements of users and other sources. Once the use cases have been developed, the experts convert the use cases into various SysML model types. The exchange of information is achieved through the use of a series of standardised diagrams each of them representing a specific model view, rather than the text documents used before. Model-based system engineering describes the internal and mutual coherence and behaviour of systems. The use of different types of model views supports the specification, analysis, design, verification and validation of the interface standard. For example, the model view technical subsystem context represents the relevant environment. It gives information about the system boundary and describes the relationships to external interaction partners. The information flows through those interfaces are described and specified in this model. For example, a train detection section can be free or occupied by a train. The messages are shown in chronological order with the use of the model view use case scenarios using SysML sequence diagrams. The inputs and outputs are now clearly specified. A use case may be defined by one or more use case scenarios. The use case scenario describes an operation that is performed by the system interrelated to its environment. This is shown as an interaction between an actor and subsystem whereby defined essential states of the subsystem are used as preconditions. The model view use case definition defines an overview of all use cases and the interrelation to the actors in the subsystem environment. Both the model type essential states of the subsystem and the use case scenarios are refined by executable SysML state machines. This information forms the basis for the virtual prototype of the subsystem to simulate the stimuli and the response behaviour of the system. In this way, the virtual prototype enables the simulation of the verification and validation of the functional subsystem requirements, resulting in the model simulation. 
This approach avoids unexpected system behaviour in the development, design and probably also in the later phases of the system life cycle and avoids the risk of additional costs caused by ambiguous text-based requirements in legacy specifications. By simulating the behaviour of the modelled functions on the virtual prototype, the specified system behaviour can be tested. The results of the model simulation make it possible to compare the resulting reactions from the virtual prototype to the expected test results, the functionalities and the SysML models. This method makes the system comprehensible. It makes evaluation of the system possible and it provides an intuitive user interface. It facilitates communication and sharing of ideas with all users. The model simulation helps to reduce design errors in the early phases and that allows cost savings in the long term. The model simulation also helps early automated verification and validation of the system functions. These tools are used to demonstrate the functionality to the infrastructure managers. Apart from simulation, the aim is to be able to use state-of-the-art computer science techniques to furnish mathematical proofs that the interface specification meets all requirements. Two infrastructure managers who are partners of Ulinks have asked two universities to start research on this. These two universities have developed a formal modelling language and an associated high-performance toolset, which are especially suitable for analysing the quality of the system designs. They perform a mathematical proof based on national knowledge and the typically used national specific subsystems of the two infrastructure managers. Such a mathematical proof is executed using formal methods as a complement to system testing so as to ensure correct behaviour of complex systems. First, the SysML models are translated into the formal modelling language. This translation requires that the models are correct and complete. This is extensively verified using mathematical and automated tools. Being thorough now saves time and money later. Furthermore, a relation is established between national requirements and the U-Link standard. And finally, it can be tested using the formal model to determine whether products comply to the U-Link standard. The analysis of the formal model derived from the SysML model gives IM's mathematical confidence that the U-Link standard is fit for purpose with national subsystems. The use of formal methods is an important step for the future of signalling. It will serve the next generation of signalling engineers. The railways involved will profit from the results by using the methodology and tools in their quality assurance processes. The progress and results will be disseminated through publications in the relevant journals.